Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use slow-mo video which is a fairly new tool for recalculating uh, image motion in videos so that you can change the speed in a more organic way. Uh, as it says on the website you can smoothly slow down and speed up your footage optionally with motion blur. Um, this is the website here. I'm going to put links to all the stuff we do here in the show notes so uh, you don't have to try to copy it out of the video here that's not fun at all especially if you can't watch it in HD <clears throat> so what it, it does is it's actually going to calculate gonna try to figure out the motion of all the pixels in our video and uh, create in between frames between our uh, our frames in our video so that we can have a really realistic looking slow motion effect but it, in general, it's just a, a tool for slowing down and speeding up video, uh, which is really cool. So uh, the first thing to do is go to download. Also, uh, slow-mo video only compiles on uh, Linux right now. It, as it says here, currently slow-mo video runs on Linux only. I'm going to show, be showing how to install it today on Ubuntu, which is one of the more popular uh, Linux distributions. You can get it at ubuntu.com. Uh, how to install and set up Ubuntu is way beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial, but hopefully you can get one, get Ubuntu up and running if you're not already. It's a great operating system. I use it as my main operating system and have for the past four years. So uh, once, uh, once you've got that, you go to download on the Slow Mo Video website, and I'm going to just get the a tarball of the source code from that link there uh, and I'll probably put this link in the show notes too the latest one was uh, com was put together on the 15th of September I'll just take that and save it to the folder for this tutorial go back uh, we're gonna need this site in a bit but another thing you're gonna need is the NVIDIA uh, CG toolkit which is at NVIDIA Developer Zone. I'm going to put this link in the show notes. Uh, and you have to register for this site in order to get these downloads. Uh, and I've already got this installed, so I'm not going to do this now. But you just want to get the one for your system. The Linux uh, builds here, we have 32-bit and 64-bit. You can get a Tarball, an RPM for Red Hat type systems, and a Deb for Debian and Ubuntu type systems. That's the one I used. Uh, you want to make sure you use 64 or 32-bit, whichever one uh, is your system. So once you got that, the other thing you're going to need is all the dependencies that come with uh, that that slow mo requires, and they are listed conveniently right here on the website. I'm going to copy this and paste it in the show notes also, uh, which will be at spencerdupre.org. By the way, that's my website. Uh, and the one thing missing from this command is uh, you need the command sudo at the beginning. So if we just copy this here and then bring up a terminal. I was doing this earlier today, but I'm just going to reset and clear my terminal here. And uh, there we go. Uh, and then paste that command in the terminal. Right click, paste and that will install all the dependencies I already have them installed so I'm not going to do this but the one thing to point out is you're going to need to include the command sudo at the beginning oops wrong keyboard layout there uh, sudo sudo before the apt get install part uh, I don't know why he left that off there but uh, there you go so sudo apt get install uh, all these packages and then once you have that You'll be, you'll be ready. So then uh, they have very, very good instructions here on the slow mo video site. Uh, first, what we need to do is go to that tarball that we downloaded and extract it. I'm going to extract the source code here. Now we have our main folder, which is slow mo video sources version 0.2.3. That's the folder we'll be working from in the terminal here. So I'm going to change directory. Uh, with the command cd into that folder which is tutorials slow mo slow mo video sources 
and then according to the instructions well I'm just gonna tell you what to do because uh, but you can follow these instructions too which are fairly simple uh, the only thing that threw me for a loop was that I didn't realize I needed to download and install the CG toolkit at first but once you've got that um, you're gonna need to change directory also into the slow-mo video folder within our main folder so inside our main folder we have this folder slow-mo video you're gonna wanna go into there and then we're gonna make a directory called build mkdir build and then change into that folder build so now we're in the build folder as our terminal prompt indicates and we're going to do cmake dot dot which will run the program CMake on the folder above. The, the double dots means the folder above this one. And here it's running. And CMake has done its thing. Now we can do make-j3. And this can take a few minutes. Uh, well, it takes about a minute on this machine, which is a Intel Core 2 Duo processor and four gigs of RAM and it's just gonna build all these pieces compiling the C or C++ uh, looks like it's C++ because it has the CPP extension on the files there and nice thing is it's got a percentage here so we know how close we are to being done 68 percent alrighty it's really not that bad like if you've ever compiled blender this takes a lot less time to compile than Blender does, at least on, on this computer. Uh, so we're almost done here, 89. All right, making the executables, 98, 99. And there we go, we're done. Uh, it's built so now we can do make install which will copy all the built files into the spot they're supposed to go which incidentally is in our main folder slow-mo video install is where they were all put so that's great uh, we have one more step to do though we need to change directory up two levels so cd dot dot whack dot dot will take us up out of build into slow mo video and then up out of slow mo video into our main directory and then I'm going to cd into this uh, v3d which has the uh, the flow builder program which uses the NVIDIA CG toolkit and then we have very similar uh, instructions we're going to create a directory called build so mkdir build cd into build uh, C make above done then make dash J3 and this one builds a lot faster than slow-mo does because it's just one executable and then we'll do make install and now the files have been copied where they need to and we're done with the terminal so now you can run slow-mo video from uh, install and then you need to go into bin which is short for binary I think and then we have a bunch of executables here and the one that I'm gonna run is slow-mo UI and there we go so we now have slow-mo up I'm gonna maximize it okay so the first thing to do is create a new project so go to slow-mo video UI new and then we got to create a file name for the project. I'm going to call this bowling. Uh, I guess I already have a project named bowling. So I'm going to call it bowling tutorial. And then I'm going to browse for the video. And the reason I called it bowling is I have this clip of some friends and I uh, when we went bowling. And so you, you name your project, and then you browse and pick your video file, and there you go. And it's going to start extracting the frames. Now, I have already processed this video, so it extracted those frames pretty quickly. 
but it'll take a little more time if you're doing it for the first time. So here we are. Uh, we have this grid here. And you'll see if, uh, if you move the mouse, if you start at the bottom here, the video plays from bottom to top. So as we go up, the video goes forward. Up and down. That's the, uh, that's the axis for the original video. Now if we hold down control and scroll, we can zoom out. And we see that the end of the video is at this uh, bold white bar up here. So we can start adding some nodes for animation by clicking on the grid. And we can place two of them there. Now this one I believe has to be, um, I don't know where it has to be, but I usually put it up against the beginning because our final video renders from left to right. So that was a little confusing for me at first. The original video plays from bottom to top and the final video plays from left to right. So now if we wanted this video to play exactly the same as it does normally, we could put our start node down here in the very bottom corner at the beginning of both the, the final video and the original. And then we can right click on the segment here, the line, and choose set speed to times one. In fact, I'm going to move this node up to the very top and then do that again. Okay, I'm going to move it out actually and then choose set it to speed one. There we go. I'm going to delete this extra one that was made here. I don't know why it does that. But now we have our video playing at one time speed. So it would play completely normal. Um, this could actually be useful if you wanted to retarget frame rates. So for instance, I'm in the US and my camera records video at 29.97 frames per second, which is the NTSC frame rate standard. Um, but the standard for uh, real like 35 millimeter movie film is 24 frames a second. So we could use this, we could use slow-mo videos uh, motion uh, estimation, motion retargeting, rebuilding features to retarget the video to 24 frames per second in a smooth way instead of just deleting frames or adding frames like most systems do. So that's one thing you could do with that feature is just set it to times one. You could do crazy things like you can click anywhere here to add new nodes and, uh, and you could edit the video like so and what this would do for instance up here it would be playing forward it would probably actually be playing faster than real time and like if we did it like this that would definitely be faster so there we go it was playing much faster oh and this monitor over here the curve monitor will show you um, the speed or the positioning of the video for uh, your your output video your final render except it doesn't have any motion blur or or recalculate it just shows you the frames so we see yeah if I move this up here um, yeah so anyway this would be faster and then the video would actually play backwards see it goes he goes down to reach for the ball and then he puts it down again because it goes backwards and see here it goes backwards really fast because people are walking backwards and bowling balls are rolling back into their hands it's going backwards because the original video plays from bottom to top so now we've got the line going from top to bottom so it's gonna play backwards and then here it goes forwards again really fast and then it goes backwards again so this is a really crazy setup here and I don't really want to do this but it's it's a tool that's available to you and you could probably do some really creative stuff with that I'm just gonna do a really simple shot here and I wanna actually start this a little later so I can grab this and move it up and down and pick the spot where I want it to start I want it to start right before he swings right about there and then I'm gonna move this one and set it about uh, let's see up and down I'm going to put it right, I'm going to zoom in a bit, control, scroll, and I'm going to use shift and scroll to, uh, to scroll horizontally. And 
then I'm going to do when he's done swinging, when the ball is released and hits the floor. There we go. Now we could right click on this and set speed to 1, but I don't really need to do that. Uh, if we hold the mouse over this node, we see that this point in the video is at 14 seconds into the original video. And this point is at 16 seconds into the original video. So in terms of the original video, this clip is 2 seconds long. But then if we look down here at the bottom, below the grid, we see this is 0 seconds, obviously, because it's all the way at the left. And this is 8.5 seconds. So I'm actually going to try to move that just horizontally over to about 4. So we're using a 2 second clip from our original video and it's good, we're going to make it 4 seconds long. So that should make it about uh, well, double the slowness basically. And I'm going to zoom in even closer on that. Now another thing we can do with our segment is right click on it and we can change it from a linear curve into a bezier curve which gives us these circular bezier handles but you can't grab those because if you try to grab them it just grabs the uh, just highlights the the uh, square node itself so to grab the handles you hold down shift and then you can click uh, just left click and select the bezier handles and now you can create a nice curved flow of the animation if you like. I think I'll give it a bit of a curve here. Okay, one more thing we can do to our video before we render is uh, give it some motion blur. So if we go back to the Slow Mo Video website, under documentation, it explains pretty clearly how this motion blur system works. We use a mathematical function to process just how much blur there should be. So if we right click on this, you do it per segment. So here's a node, here's a node, and this is the segment in between them. So if we choose this segment, we can do set or edit shutter function. This is going to simulate the shutter of a camera. So on a film camera, the shutter looks like a little circle that rotates around except it's it's been cut in half. There's only half of a circle and it rotates in front of the, uh, the, the frames themselves, the frames of film. And when it rotates in front, it covers the film up. And then when it rotates around a little more, it's uncovered because it's a circle that's been cut in half. I wish I had a diagram for this. But it, since it's a half circle, what that means is your shutter speed on a typical film camera, the standard setup, uh, the shutter speed is about half or is actually about double of what the frame rate is and that's actually explained a bit on the website so if you're using the standard frame rate of 24 frames per second a shutter like that would give you a 1 48th of a second shutter speed which we could do using this function here that is included on the website return 0.5 times 1 divided by FPS and the FPS is, I believe, the FPS of the final video. So, <clears throat> so this would give us some pretty uh, interesting motion blur. But the thing is, that would work perfectly if we weren't slowing down the video at all. But we are. And so that tends to give you a lot of motion blur, I've found. So what we want is this other function listed here, which uses the dy variable. <clears throat> the dy variable explained up here it says the dy variable is exactly what you need now it contains the input time that is covered by the current frame so if it's a 10 times speed that would be 10 divided by 24 frames per second so that's basically the speed of our current <clears throat> of our current uh, clip so under shutter functions we'll click the plus sign to add a new function and replace this text with that function. And now our motion blur is set up, which turns this segment yellow to indicate that it has motion blur. So now our video is all set up, and we can just go to slow mo video UI and render. And we have a few more settings here. We have uh, the size, you can do original size or small. We have the interpolation, 
The default is two-way interpolation accurate. My tests, I found that Bezier interpolation works really well. But this is all going to require experimentation. Um, and then we have our lambda value for the optical flow. It says that using higher values will have higher quality footage. But I've found actually that uh, that can actually produce a lot of artifacts because it will miscalculate motion. This, is, this would all work a lot better if your original footage is very clear and very sharp and very in focus. Uh, my camera has a fair amount of grain so it tends to have a lot of artifacts. So I'm going to use a pretty small value, I think maybe 8. So I'm going to use 8 and pretty much the other settings we can leave as it is. Um, and then there's an OK button down here to start the render. Actually I'm going to here you can choose where your final video is put. I'm going to put it in tutorials, slow-mo, call it bowling, and slow-mo video likes to save its videos as MPEG files, so MPG, bowling.mpg. All right, now we're ready to click OK and render out the video. And I'm going to warn you, I'm going to stop the video now because slow-mo video will really use your GPU a lot to the point on this computer where it's pretty much uh, hard to use the com it's almost unusable the computer uh, the GPU just locks up and uh, your mouse will jump around a lot and you won't be able to click on things very well and also uh, part of the way it, it just works right now is slow-mo video constantly pops up a little render I think it's called uh, GLTV1 or something, <clears throat> which is using the NVIDIA CG toolkit to uh, calculate the motion of the frames. And it's a necessary part, but that keeps popping up and taking focus away from whatever other window you're trying to use. So it's almost impossible to type things or whatever. It's just kind of annoying. It, this software is only version 0 0.2 though. So, um, be forgiving. So, uh, probably the best thing to do is just to start it going and leave it uh, until it's finished. And the better graphics card you have, uh, the better, the the better, the faster it'll go. And since it uses this NVIDIA CG toolkit, you need an NVIDIA graphics card. I should have said that up at the front. You're gonna have to have an NVIDIA graphics card. Of course, you probably can't install the toolkit without an NVIDIA graphics card anyway. And I think the developer is going to work on implementing OpenCL or something else like that so that we don't have to always have an NVIDIA graphics card and so forth. So uh, this program definitely has a nice bright future but it's got it works really well as it is uh, right now. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, hope you learned something, and uh, hope to see you again. This has been Spencer Dupre, SpencerDupre.org.